welcome to our used 2019 Wolf Pup 18 RJB. Start right in your back door here. So you have your two latches there, you're just gonna flip those up. Bring your handle down and swing it off to the side. Same thing on the other side, flip it open. Then you can just kind of grab those with your handle. Gradually, and then come down. You can see you get the textured kind of round door here. Fit right on inside. You're closing it, flipping it back up. Put your latches up into place, and you can see they pop in automatically. Then you do also have the keys there to lock them down. Right around the corner, you're going to find these little vents here. You kind of throw out your kind of garage door backspace here. Those are just vents for if you were to be running something inside the unit. Down underneath there, you're going to find a stabilizer jack. So all they do is just run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so, and that'll just get rid of any sort of bounce or sway while you're using the unit. Or of course, while you're loading up, you just want to keep it that bit stabler. All right, in front of that, we've got your sewer hose holder. You get that little knob there, you can kind of pull on that and turn it on out. Inside of there, you're going to find your sewer hose. Take note of those two ears and the adapter here. It's probably hooking it up to your sewer system. And then the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long it back on in there and then you can see kind of little cutouts at the two sides there we'll line those up with their little notches and then just give it that turn to lock it in place up from there you're gonna find your stove vent so you got a couple little notches there you can reach in pop it open a little fan inside of course is to, there to evacuate any fumes from your stove whenever you're done you're just gonna push it back into place until it clicks and that'll just prevent any dust from kicking up in there during travel Straight down from there, you'll find the exhaust from your furnace. So if you're ever running your furnace, you just want to make sure that it's not blocked off. It does get hot. Right in front of there, we get the vent for your fridge. Nothing really there for you to worry about. Just kind of a service port. This light right here is just on a switch inside of the unit. I'll point that out once we get there. Directly underneath that, you're going to find your sewer system. So your sewer cap here has all the same sort of ears on it that your sewer hose had. You'll just be pressing on that a bit and kind of give it a turn. That'll pop out of there. On the left, you get a gray valve. On the right, you get a black. Black valve is going to be filled from your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilet. So it's just going to be dirtiest water. Of course, you want to dump that first. Once that's done, you can then come to the gray. Gray tank is going to be filled from your sinks as well as your showers. So typically cleaner water. We'll dump that last to help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Another couple of steps forward, we get your shower here. So you'll get a key just like this guy here. Just stick it on into there and open her up. You get the standard three foot hose with hot and cold water, of course. If you got the dog out getting muddy, you can spray him off where he gets inside. And we can close it off and lock it back down. Right underneath there is your short cord inlet. So you get the little notch in the bottom corner there, lines up with this notch here. You press those in together, little eighth turn to lock it down. Then you get the threaded collar there to really lock it into place. As you follow the cord back, you're gonna find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites will have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you got the power to do so. Another step forward from there, we get your city water inlet, pop that cap off of there and your water hose plug into there, turn on the water, that pressurize your water lines throughout the system. Right beside that's your fresh water inlet, pop that cap out, same water hose will stick into there, turn on the water, that fills up your fresh water tank. Hot water tanks right in front of that all. Just line up that keyway and it pops on open. Your control for turning it on with electricity, just down in the bottom corner there. Turning it on with propane is a switch just inside the unit, so we'll go over that once we get there. Before you turn it on with either source though, you just want to hit this pressure relief valve there. If the tank were full, you'd get a little bit of water coming out, just letting you know it is of course full. But not getting any water out of there just means that it is empty or close to it, and you do run the risk of burning out your elements, so you just want to make sure it's full before firing it up. Stepping around the front of the unit, you'll see this little black box here. That's your battery box, so your battery's sitting right in there. Battery's charging as long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back or your seven pin to tow vehicle. Propane tank right in front of that. Standard tank, you're just turning that knob to open it up. Standard tin jack in front, one way's up, the other way's down. Solar panel plug in on the side here. Just pop that open for your own solar panel, we'll plug into there, it charges the batteries. Storage compartment. A little finger latch on the side there holds it open for you inside of here you're going to find a water hose inside that water hose you'll find your park adapter so your 30 amp cord into there 15 to your standard outlet this customer's also opted to go with the weight distribution hitch so we just got that stored in here for him as well as well as the spare tire see another one of those vents there you got your two outside speakers here that here is just a little V-channel latch for a TV mount. So if you wanted to bring the TV outside, you can. Cable and satellite outlets, as well as your power outlet for the TV. And then we're just back around to the back. Snowmaker way inside the units. 
here. So this handle here just up 90 degrees and falls into place. Then we can open up the door. The door is just on a friction hinge, so it kind of sits just wherever you leave it. I will point out real quick, if you've got it wide open, it will come in contact with your awning arm. So if you're running your awning, you just want to make sure that's about 80, 90 degrees or so. For the steps, you're going to pull that latch over and put them on out. There's the little steps here, or sorry, so little pins on either side. You just pull those out and you can extend or retract your legs, just based on the campsite needs. As we come inside, first things first, right on the left, you got your fire extinguisher, that's standard, pull the pin, point and shoot. Straight up the wall from there, we get your light switches. There's one on the left here, I believe does an outside light, and the one on the right was that uh, kind of accent light that we saw over by your sewer system. The rest of the lights throughout the unit are just on their own little center push buttons, so we'll kind of turn those on as we go. While you're awning, press and hold extend and that awning might tie out again. We're just gonna wash that door at 90 degrees. Once that awning is fully extended, we'll see a little black flap come down as well as the gray metal tube. Once you see those, you're gonna stop. If you're to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case the fabric will be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water and accelerating growth of mold and mildew. It is always gonna hold that little bit of water though, as you can see. So the flap should have come down there. It's just a little bit sticky right now. There it is. So if it were to start raining, it's just gonna hold some water anyways. So what you can do is come to either arm, front or rear, just kind of pinch those two little posts together and get them in deep enough. You can basically extend or retract this leg a bit and that'll change the pitch of the awning over the head, allowing water to then run off. I have the same thing on them, so you can do that at the front here as well. So if you just like the steeper angle a bit nicer, because it does give more shade, you got the ability to do so. Once you're done, just press and hold the track. That only will come back in. Again, just watch to make sure that the fabric's over top of the tube. Another thing to keep in mind with your awning is once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, it does catch all that wind, so you just want to bring it back in again so you don't run the rest of the your arms. So this right here is just the other side of those vents that you see from the outside. Basically, you have this handle here that you're just going to kind of swing to either side. And as you can see, it just kind of opens it up. You can go either way. So just kind of based on which way your draft is going, you can just make sure that you, know, you have an intake and exhaust to make sure you have fresh air in here. TV bracket up on the wall here. Up the wall from there, you're going to find an HDMI inlet outlet. So that is tied into your stereo for your surround sound. Antenna outlet right beside it. You got that little power button there right beside it for turning it on and off. And the power outlet's there for the TV, of course. Window here. So basically just pull that trigger, slide it on open. Blinds throughout the unit. Just kind of sit where you leave them. And to the back here, you get your storage up top. Emergency exit here, you pull that tab to get rid of the screen. Take this handle here and throw it outside and hop on out. The little tables back here, as well as another little uh, fire extinguisher. Again, pull the pin point, shoot. So you can see the little extra straps here. These legs have little push pins on them. You're just gonna push those in, swing them out, and pop into place. Same thing over here. It'll then fold down once you undo the straps, then you can kind of set up your bench and dinette area. It's the same sort of thing over here. Have the little pop-up table underneath. We'll see so this little yellow trigger right there. That's basically just your latch. You just kind of pull that over whenever you want to swing it up or down. Two fire protected outlet up the wall from there. So reset, test on the bottom, reset on top. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, first thing you should check. USB outlets there. Little remote here, just on the little Velcros there, tied into your stereo here. Power button there turns it off. Pressing it mutes it. Press and hold to turn it back off. Zone one's your inside set of speakers. Zone two is your outside set. Straightforward stereo afterwards. And a little light up on the top above your sink. Some storage across the top here too. That binder there's got all of your owner's manuals in it. Any remotes, anything like that, you're gonna find in there. Microwave beside it. Pretty standard, just like home. Underneath it's your range vent, so you got a light as well as a fan. 
This is that fan that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up to that get any sort of fumes. Stove here, so it got, just got its own little custom cover there. We're just gonna turn that over to light, hit it with a lighter. And just as it clears the air out of the line here. So don't just turn it back off. The cover will come back over it. The sink right beside it, hot and cold water course. You have the little mobile head. Right behind it is your monitor panel. So in the bottom left corner is your water heater control. You turn that switch on, turns on your water heater. You get that little light up there, just letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that light goes out, the sequence has started. It's gonna try that three times. If after the third try it doesn't fire up, at that point you're just gonna turn it off and back on to reset it. Water pump switch is right beside it. Turn that switch on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. So you can actually hear that water heater fire up from right here. In the top there, you get your monitor systems. The batteries in the bottom, you can see we're currently secret charging. G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, will go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. Storage underneath. Just be mindful of your drains and your water lines over on the side there. You also have your little tie downs for whatever you're hauling. Furnace is right beside it. The nice thing about this furnace is once it fires up in the little bottom left corner there, you'll be able to see the little flame once it gets going. Beside that's your converter. Press it top and center and it'll pop on open. You get all of your breakers will cross the middle here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the center. So you turn it off and then back on to reset it. Fuses are on the right side. Whenever a fuse breaks, you'll get a little red LED right beside it just to let you know which one went. LP detectors on the side there. LP propane is heavier than air. It sits on the floor. That guy detects and starts going off just like your smoke detector would. Bridge is right on top of it all. On the left there you get your power button. So with that button close to flush, that's it turned on. And with auto illuminated, this course is running on auto. Auto's first looking for AC power. If AC power is taken away, it'll automatically flip over to gas. If you want it to run solely on gas, you can have that button come out. It'll fire up just on gas. If that check light comes on, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. At that point, just off and back on to reset it. Freezer up top, bridge down low. Temp selections in the top right corner there. On the wall beside it, we've got your thermostat. So this is just for your furnace. So with that slider all the way over to the left, that's it turned off. As we slide it to the right, you'll hear it click. All the way over to the right is max heat. Anywhere in the center is kind of your temperature selection. And like I was saying, we'll be able to see that got fire up. Downside to this furnace is that it's not ducted. So if you're looking to move that air forward and back, you're just gonna to want to get yourself a fan or something. Once you're done, slide it all the way over the left till it clicks, and that's it then turned off. Into the bathroom, center push button light again, the shower, standard head and hose. Up top you get your little roof vent there, you just turn that knob to open it up, push button in the back turns on the fan. Toilet flips on open, you get your flusher on the right side there. And then into the bedroom, you can see all your cushions here. Those are for your dinettes in the back. You get a USB outlet over there, as well as a power outlet. And then if we pick up on the sandal here, you do get access into that front storage compartment. And that's about it for this little guy. So if you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call, 204-237-7272.